Hi, welcome to Mojo Plays. I'm John, and today we're looking at the top 10 hardest games to get into. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Alrighty, today we're going over the top 10 games that are just plain tough to get into. Interested in playing these games? Good luck. Whether it's a steep learning curve, a lack of guidance, or even just a downright terribly toxic community, these games are notoriously difficult for beginners. Now, I don't want to hear any get goods in the comments or the end game is the real game. No, please just let me enjoy a game. I already work a nine to five. I don't want another one. Quick side note, I'm not coming at anyone who plays these games. I myself am a degenerate league player. Let's just blow off some steam and enjoy the list together. Starting things off with number 10, we have Escape from Tarkov. No mini maps, no direction, no help. This game is a hardcore extraction shooter. In fact, some might say that this is the extraction shooter. So if you're not familiar with the genre, oh boy, good luck. You are being hunted by players that are infinitely better than you are. You have no shot. I think I see someone. Uh, did I mention that if you die, you lose everything? I don't want to have a bad day come home, play the game, and just lose. Like most entries on this list, it's best played with friends so that you have someone who will calm you down after losing hours of loot. There's a reason the military promotes the idea of battle buddies. You'll need one for this. Tracking its way into number nine, we have Monster Hunter World. So you wanna be a hunter, eh? Are you prepared to study the ways of the beast? No, really, study? You kinda have to. There's a lot to learn here. You'll have to learn how to read monsters like Steve Irwin. Oh, crikey, what a beaut. I, I can't do accents. If you haven't played a Monster Hunter game before, then you will be unfamiliar with the gameplay loop. The armor and weapon systems can be a lot, the tracking might be confusing, and the fights can be long. The rewards, however, are fantastic. If you are a beginner just getting into Monster Hunter, don't give up, it's worth it. Unlike some other games in this list. Drifting its way into our number four spot is Rocket League. Technically, this is a pretty easy game to get into. The tutorial is pretty streamlined and the controls are relatively straightforward. It's when you enter your first match against real people that you realize, oh no, I'm in over my head. Like the car currently over me, dunking in a shot like Shaq in his prime. Just balls to the face immediately. Pinches, aerials, flip resets. It'll take months to even get into a position to understand these terms. Even the ball cam can be disorienting to beginners. If you're gonna give this one a try, just be prepared to see a lot of what a save in chat. Getting lost at number seven, we have Elden Ring. Wait, wait, whoa, Elden Ring, really? Well, why not Dark Souls, Bloodborne, or Sekiro? Because this is my list. Look, we all agree that generally Soulsborne games are tough. Dodge rolling, parrying, and iframes are tough to learn. And there could be an argument made for any one of these games to be on this list. But Elden Ring is different. It's big, it's vast, and darn it, I get lost. With say, the Dark Souls series, they're at least somewhat linear. I can feel confident that if I wander upon something, I may have a chance of beating it. In Elden Ring, I can accidentally wander into a place called John's Torture Chamber and get atomized in a second. I don't want an experience where I can accidentally walk into an impossible part of the game. Just give me an achievable challenge challenge directly. Don't make me have to find it. Oh boy, I can already feel the comments being typed out on this video. <laughs> Look, if you want Sekiro at number seven, like you just, you just do that in your head, you know? At number six, we have Guitar Hero. Some people just don't have rhythm and that's okay, generally. Not for this game though. I struggle with this one because I understand that depending on who you are, this might actually be pretty easy to pick up. Not for me. Uh, I've been trying to play this game for years and I still haven't even touched the orange button on the end. I'm more of a Dance Dance Revolution guy. I know that about myself. The worst thing about this game is playing with your friends. We're in the difficulty select screen and my novice self is happy playing on easy. And then I see my friend Aiden, Aiden, cranking it all the way up to 11, show off. What's worse is I still spoil the song by missing notes, screwing them up in the process. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sit this one out. At number five, we have 
Destiny 2. To start off, let me just say that I do have the legacy edition of the game and I have put in about 25 hours. Uh, I come from a place of love when I say, Bungie, what are you doing? How much for all of the expansions? Do you promise not to delete any of the content I pay for? No? Well, that sucks. Ugh. As a new player, you cannot enjoy the full story anymore. Early expansions have been vaulted with no way of accessing them. On top of this missing content, there is years of in-game systems and mechanics that can just be confusing to learn. Think you have a grasp on it all? Just wait until you get into the late game grind. Seriously, I have friends that actively tell me to stay away from this game. That's not a good sign. Destiny 2 players, are you okay? Like, do you need a hug? Like, what do you need from me? Like, I'm here. Dota 2 smacks down at our number four slot. If you can get past the toxic teammates, you will only find hours and hours of pain before you even start to understand the complexities of this game. The learning curve is high for MOBAs, and this one might be the toughest one out there. You must play with bots for like, I don't know, the first five hours of gameplay before you even think about playing with other people. In this game, when you make a mistake, you not only let yourself down, you let your team down. They didn't sign up for you and they will remind you how bad you are. There is little to no payoff to this game. Maybe try League of Legends or heck, even Smite before you give this one a try. Digging in at number three, we have Dwarf Fortress. Where do I even begin with this one? Firstly, unlike the other games on this list, I fully recommend this game. It's grand, it's extensive, and it will eat away at your days in a good way. The problem is getting into it. These ASCII graphics are tough to look at and the game is unapologetically complex. The tutorial tries its best, but inevitably you will need to go online and search up some guides. Maybe get a geology degree while you're at it. This is a construction and management sim where each dwarf has their own free will, literally their own thoughts and motivations. You can't control them directly, which is cool sometimes, but when you're trying to, I don't know, prevent them from digging into a live volcano and they do it anyways, it can be frustrating. At the very least, you can end runs in horribly fun ways, which is a good consolation prize. At number two, we have Counter-Strike, one of the biggest esports in the world. People are sweaty in this game and it can make for a pretty intimidating environment for new players. This isn't Call of Duty. You make one mistake and you are dead. Movement speed relative to hitboxes are a challenge. The lineups will boggle the mind and even just shooting straight can be testing. This game is made up of pure mechanics that without a proper grasp of them, you will not have a good time. You're gonna have a bad time. On top of just understanding the gameplay, you'll need to obtain a proper grip on the meta. Understanding map layouts, rotations, and God, oh God, the economy. You can't forget the economy. Good luck out there. Have fun getting cussed out in a language you don't understand. Before we get into our number one pick, let's go over a few honorable mentions. F-Zero GX is notoriously difficult and will cause anyone to throw their GameCube controller through a wall, Nintendo. Please bring this one back. StarCraft 2 will have you developing Carpal Tunnel in no time. Tekken and Smash Melee are two games that I commend you just for trying to pick up competitively. And iRacing is a fun one because not only are you playing against capital G gamers, but also real professional racing drivers, including Max Verstappen, the reigning World Formula One driver's champion. And at number one, we have EVE Online, the closest thing that we have to a real simulated space war. As a new player, you will enter a world unknown to you. Do you wanna lose real world money because you didn't understand a mechanic? Want to waste hours of your time just because you didn't read the insanely complex UI correctly? This game is for you. This game is no joke, it is real. It is completely player driven and there have been real world news stories written about this game. Heists, betrayals, market manipulation, all done by people. There are actual governments made up by players in this game. A Guinness World Record setting battle called the massacre at M2XFE cost players an estimated $378,000 of real world cash. Basically, 
If you are a new player trying to get into this game, expect to commit your time and energy into crafting an entire second life for yourself. Do you know any other games that are hard to get into? Let us know if we missed one in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day.